There is very rich imagery in this uh, portion of John's Gospel about the vine and resin. And whenever we read the, the Gospel, we have to look at them uh, not just uh, literally, but also figuratively of what is really of the essence of the message of the evangelist. This image of the vine and the branches is extremely important to the children of Israel. It's not something that was new to Jesus or something that the Israelites could not understand because the vine was for them a symbol of Israel. Just like we have a symbol, we have the eagle. Russians have a bear. So, and he's had a dragon. Well, the Israelites had the vine and the branches. As a matter of fact, when excavations are being done, they will find ancient buildings that have over the portal vine and branches. Now, it is extremely significant because Israel gets its life from God. Israel exists because of God. And God is the divine. And Israel must remain connected to the vine in order to prosper, in order to uh, grow, and in order to bear fruit. Basically, in order to survive. In order to survive. John presumes that we're going to be familiar with the Gospels and then, of course, later on, we have the Epistles. But one of the themes that always ran through the Joanine communities was the uh, theme of God is love. So, what is sustaining Israel? What is the uh, life blood of Israel, the sap, I suppose, uh, is the uh, love of God that is communicated to his people. Once Israel is detached from that vine, Israel can no longer exist. And that's why we have, throughout Jewish history, we have times of destruction. We have times of invasion, times of obliteration. And then for a long time, Israel can practically disappear, especially after the conquering of the Romans. And so, once Israel gets detached from God, it leaves itself open to all kinds of destruction. Jesus says he is the vine. But branches are not only individuals. Branches are also corporate. Israel is a corporate entity. And for Israel to continue to exist, it wasn't just individual Jewish people. It was that corporate identity of the state of Israel and of the people who compose or comprise of that state. So much so that the Jewish people and to this day pious Jews will say the prayer, the Shema, the Shema, to remind them that they are God's people and that they have remained attached to God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You should love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole mind, with your whole strength. Drill these words into your children, whether at home or away, and write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. Titus Jesus says that for every day. Reminder of who they are and who they have to stay attached to. Some of you might have friends who are Jewish, and if you go to their home, Pius II will have a mezuzah on the door, and that mezuzah is a reminder of the Torah, God's commandments, and when they enter the house, they kiss the mezuzah. Okay, so you can see how important this is. Now, when Jesus speaks to us today, uh, certainly, he's talking about you know, individual people that without Jesus we're going to uh, wither and that we're going to lose our soul. But as they say, Israel is a corporate entity, and the Israelites didn't think of themselves just simply as individuals. They, they were themselves as the children of God, the 12 tribes of Israel. 
and that Israel, in ancient times, had remained connected to God in order for Israel to survive. And as we said, there were many times when because they drifted from God, uh, they were conquered by foreign powers. Let's talk about uh, our own country, our own situation today. We're living in a time when our national identity is being threatened. As a matter of fact, um, it's frightening where we are today as people. My contention is that we have lost a sense of God and the sense of our loss of connectedness to Almighty God. We cannot survive as a free country unless we remain connected to God and to the truths that God gives us and as they are found in our founding documents, especially all men are created, we are all given the right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Those rights, they are rooted in God. When we begin to forget those very important rights, we have to look beneath why. And the why is because we have forgotten God, the God who has given us those rights. And so we then have a country uh, that is um, being torn apart. This country is being torn apart. It, it breaks my heart to see what's happening when you can have a, practically a, a civil war, at least maybe not you know, physically bearing arms and fighting physically, although that's happening too, but uh, a dividing mentality between blue states and red states. It almost seems like, how do, you, how do you get this back together again? And is this spreading? Is this spreading? And that's the question we have to ask ourselves. What is wrong? Why is there such great division? And it's not just a Democrat or Republican. You also have a problem with the political parties themselves. How many speakers of the House do we have to have? Every time somebody gets mad, somebody else says they have to go. That's not the America that we know. America is based on principles. America is based on essentially God's law. And God's law calls us to together to work with each other. Abraham Lincoln said very clearly, you know, a house divided cannot stand. House divided cannot stand. One last area where I have to speak to you very uh, sadly, but um, it has to be said. We now have in this country a rise of anti Semitism. This is abhorrent. I never thought that I would see and hear what I am seeing and hearing being shouted from the campuses of our major universities. Death to Jews. Is this a God? This is reminiscent of Nazi Germany. And the college campuses. And these are the future leaders of America. What future do we have? If college students in at least Ivy League schools are filled with hatred and that Jewish people are afraid to go to class, <coughs> the problem is a lack of God. God talks about love. When people begin to hate and to hurt each other and to wish death on each other, that is not of God. So what do we do? What do 
we do. We be very clear about that. Nazi Germany came about because good people kept their mouths shut. Because a lot of religious leaders kept their mouths shut. And because some of the politicians who knew better kept their mouths shut. Any person who believes in God cannot keep their mouth shut. No matter how many votes there are in Dearborn, Michigan, either Republicans nor Democrats can keep their mouth shut, lest we end up 